Good morning, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. This is Logan Burgess. Today is Thursday, February 23rd. Across the newswire this morning, we saw China in the market buying 120,000 metric tons of corn and also 110,000 metric tons of corn delivered to unknown destinations. So it's good to see that people are in the market for uh, corn here. It's good to see China's in the market. I did not expect to see them as a significant presence in the second half of the marketing year, mostly because of the global uh, wheat stocks and, uh, and the discount for wheat uh, compared to corn. Now, Iran also seems to be on a buying binge of wheat. Now, it's not U.S. wheat, but they did buy 800,000 metric tons uh, of, uh, of wheat from Russia and from Australia, uh, bringing them to 1.9 uh, throughout the week. You know, we, we see a, a, a serious problem with their crop. You know, it's been very, very dry, and in years past, when they've had uh, these sort of crop failures, they've imported as much as 8 million metric tons. Uh, you know, we could see that again this year, 8 to 10 million metric mm -hmm. tons imported into Iran. That should help draw down that huge uh, U uh, global wheat stocks that we see. Uh, another interesting note here, export sales uh, are not going to be reported this morning. They are reported on Friday, so stay tuned to the Friday weekly wrap-up, and we'll have you your export sales report. Uh, this morning, though, uh, USDA seems to be starting up their Agricultural Outlook Forum. Logan, is there any game-changing news? What do you see coming from them? Well, yeah, Cody, you're right. This morning we'll, we'll have some interesting uh, figures coming out from the USDA Ag Outlook Forum. You know, back on February 13th in the USDA Long-Term Ag Projections, we saw that the USDA was looking for around 94 million acres of corn to be planted, 74 uh, million acres of soybeans. This compares to 92 million acres of corn last year and 75 million acres of soybeans last year. This actually represents the fourth straight year that we've seen an increase in corn acreage, the third straight year that we've seen a decrease in bean acreage. We're not really looking at this as a big market changer here today. You can see the trade uh, averages, excuse me, for what the trade's looking at out of this uh, Ag Outlook Forum. So we really don't think it's going to be moving around the trade that much. Uh, we will be tweeting about it all day on Twitter, though, so follow us at Grain TV is where you can find us. As news comes across the newswire, we'll certainly be tweeting there. One reason that the USDA says that, this, uh, that the planted acreage isn't going to significantly change is that we haven't seen a significant change in the new crop soybean and corn ratio. Take a look here. We've really uh, broken the downtrend that we were in for a while. This chart here shows back uh, a year ago. You can see, though, that beans have really been picking up ground with respect to corn as of late. The trade's kind of looking at 2.4 as the area where soybeans is going to become really competitive for a lot of farmers out there to plant. So that will certainly be important here as we move toward the March planting intentions report. If you're a producer out there and you want to keep an eye on the spread yourself, give us a call. We'll set you up with a fire tip demo. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll come back to watch the markets trade live. I used to have several sites. Uh, now I kind of like the grower's edge. It gives me that cash max. You can tell it which markets you're looking for, and it will tell you what your highest uh, net back is based on the price they're paying at that time and the basis that they're paying. And uh, that's pretty handy because I don't have to go to so many different sites. Welcome back to Grain TV. The markets are trading live. Corn's up three quarters of a cent. Beans up five cents. Uh, wheat down seven. And Kansas City wheat down uh, eight right now. Uh, if you take a look at the dollar index, we've also taken a bit off the table there this morning. Uh, but let's take a closer look at the charting landscape. Uh, if, you, if you draw a trend uh, here, you can see that, that uh, the dollar index has been very strong. And of course, we had a, uh, a pullback uh, just recently. If you, if you draw the Fibonacci's from the very base, of course, to the peak, uh, you can see that we came right back. We sat right down on that 50% retracement. Very strong support there. Now, in the news, we have Greece receiving a bailout, but the euro did not rally on that news. And of course, the dollar uh, did not sell off on that news. Mm -hmm. To me, I think this is strong support and strong evidence that we are going to continue to see support around this 79 uh, level and that there's a good chance we could move higher and retest these highs. Logan, what are your thoughts? You know, I tend to agree with you, Cody. I think the market's looking at this and there's serious questions whether Greece can meet the obligations outlined uh, in that bailout. You know, I think that there's also questions if this is going to spread to other Eurozone countries, specifically Portugal, Spain, and Italy is what the market's really focused on here. And like you were saying, there seems to be some pretty solid technical uh, support there to the downside. I wouldn't be surprised either if we saw a little bit of a rally here. Yeah, that sounds fair enough. We're going to switch gears here and now focus a little bit on the grain complex. Soybeans is the commodity that stands out. It's mm -hmm. been gaining ground on corn. Uh, Logan, can you take us through the charting landscape on soybeans and, and let us know what's going on there? 
Yeah, well, Cody, you know, soybeans really has been rallying here uh, since December, really, largely due to weather concerns in South America. If you look at the chart here, the red line is the 50-day moving average. The blue line is the 100-day moving average. We see a point of convergence here just in the last couple of trade days around that $12 area that should provide support to the downside. But, you know, to the upside, we're looking at 12.91 as being some pretty heavy, report, uh, heavy resistance. We saw a high printed around there back in October. I wouldn't be surprised if we kind of bump our head against 12.91. A little bit of a range-bound trade here. Uh, moving forward. Yeah, you know, corn is a slightly different story. I think we're a little, we're also range bound, but we're more at the middle of our range. I think we have a little bit more upside before we hit that resistance level. Mm -hmm. To me, I think that this uh, provides a little bit of support that um, that perhaps that ratio, that soybean corn ratio, will uh, you know will pull back a little bit. I think that uh, that corn has the ability to rally up towards 670 area before it hits that resistance and then starts moving down. Beans is very close to that resistance level. So to me, I think that the uh, the landscape supports the fact that that uh, soybean corn spread uh, starts to retrace a little bit. You know, I do agree with you, Cody. Keep in mind here when we're looking at these, these are March futures. First notice day is coming up on February 29th. So if you're a producer out there and you are in March futures, keep that on your calendar. You're going to want to be out of these contracts prior to then. I think that wraps up our show here for uh, Thursday uh, morning. Have a great rest of your day.